Glass blowing is almost choreographed. If you don't move beautifully with the material, you can't make beautiful glass. You can force it to become what you want it to be, but it's gonna capture those hesitations. I'm a good dancer with glass. For the first 10 years of my career, I was a full-time gallery artist. Being fortunate enough to be successful was fantastic, but it's very, very literally feast and famine. I was in residency, and I realized that to keep going, we're, you're gonna have to do something besides sell the sculpture, which sells every few months. There was a group of like six of us that were part of a bottle share club. And one of my friends leaned over to me and he was like, Matthew, you should make us a beer glass. And I made the hoppy glass tailored to each person's handprint, literally cutting their handprint out of the glass so it fits like a glove. <laughs> I mean, this is fantastic. One of my friends was like, this is pretentious as shit. This is so pretentious. I thought it was perfect. And it's weird to think about how rewarding a $35 beer glass is versus a $6,000 sculpture. but. I can get those in people's hands. I can give people access to something artistic and something creative and something well-made, which is really, really hard with a handmade craft. The hard part about American Lager glass is making a glass that can elevate a beverage that we interact with on a daily basis. There's so many different people that drink that beverage. How do I approach designing something that everyone's gonna appreciate. So one of the things that make my glassware very unique is thinking about how the beer drinker's gonna interact with them, how it fits in their hand, how it feels, what happens as they're drinking it. I think the vessels that you serve food and drinks in are not only important because of the way they look, uh, but they're also important about the way they make the food or the drink taste. You know, when you pair up with somebody who can make any glass that you want, you can have all these different shapes and vessels so you finally get the one that makes it taste, smell, flow, carry, all at the same time right. And that's really cool. I have huge respect for brewers. I mean, that is a craft and an art form as well. When we pour a lager into this glass, it has all of these undulations that feel great in your hand. It's ergonomic, it feels fantastic. You see color variation in it. It's almost like a Rothko painting when you fill it up. And that's something where you pour a beer into it and you stop and you look at it and you hold it up to the light and you're like, this is a gorgeous experience. Sometimes I design something for the flavor profile and the experience at the same time. It's like the aromatic glass with the mountain on the inside. That creates extra surface tension. So is a design element that looks beautiful seeing this mountain emerging out of beer but while you're drinking it, it keeps the head maintained and it ensures that you get a great aroma experience. And this one works for the hoppy beer, so I drink my hoppy beers out of this. And, you know, the glassware makes a difference. It, it intensifies the, um, the experience. Well, this is a question I get asked a lot. How long does it take you to make this? I tell them, 10 years. 10,000 hours where you're sweating, where you've cut yourself, and you're just repeating, practicing, practicing. That's boring, that's not very sexy, but that's what it takes. After those 10 years, you can make it right every time within 10 minutes. Glass blowing was invented by the Romans in 50 BC. Same tools, same techniques, and it's a very unforgiving medium. At best, you have a 15 second window between success and failure. If you're working on a piece for an hour, <laughs> at 59 minutes, you can make a mistake and the piece dies, the piece breaks, and it's gone. You can't fix it, you can't save it. So the first step in glass blowing is melting glass. Throw that in about 50 pounds at a time. The furnace that we have is about 350 pounds of glass. For a batch to fine out and become a high quality glass, it has to hit 2350 degrees, crazy hot. 
At this point, we grab the blowpipe and we're gonna insert that into the furnace, quickly turning it. And this is gathering up molten glass. We come out, we do some shaping, and then we pop a bubble into it. It lets us create a wall that now we can start shaping into a beer glass. When you open the furnace door, it is such an intense experience. You either love it or you hate it. If you don't start to smile and you don't walk towards it, then you're never going to be a glass artist. I grew up in Albany, Kentucky, a farming town, one stoplight. Being an artist in rural Kentucky, you just don't do that. I had no idea how I was going to make a living. I didn't even know if that was possible. But I don't know what I am without glass, you know? We've been through a lot to get to where he is now. And if everybody could do something they love like that every single day, I mean, the sacrifices are worth it. The fact that he didn't have any handouts and built it literally all himself, I think is going to be pretty impressive to Logan when he gets older and can understand it. I love glass. I'm still just as captivated now as I was. Maybe more captivated because finally, after 15 years of working with the material, there is freedom. I have no interest in doing anything else until I die.